my kids, my grandkids, your kids and grandkids love anything that's smoking. This is what I've learned. No matter, I love no matter how it's smoking, you know, <laughs> right. they're all about it. And when it's delicious, it's even right. better. What is the science behind this? Well, Mark, the Tim Nichols from Pop and Stuff. And I first met Tim because look at this. When you have, you've been to these fairs before, right? And if you're looking right now on screen, you know why I've spilled on myself? Yeah, because I was that. drinking at the break and all of a sudden, <laughs> so it's, <laughs> this is a horrible thing. I met Tim because from across the parking lot up in Breckenridge, not only could I smell him, what well, the product? The product. Uh, but I saw the bubbling, and I thought, "Ooh, what's going on over there?" <laughs> and you go over and hear these bottles, and then you taste maybe the best root beer I've ever had in my life. And uh, immediately, I thought, "There's not only science, but what a great opportunity!" I'm all about finding opportunities to teach kids science. So I teach them about chemistry, or want to do something with carbonation. Uh, you were there, so just carbonating water like this doesn't taste very good. And no. Mark's already drinking the root beer because he, he loves it's that. It's great. Uh, you know, it does really have a great aroma to it. I mean, you can yeah. smell the root beer. Yeah. So, so main ingredient, of course, everybody thinks it's got to be some sort of extract and some sugar and some water and you've got it, but there really is a much greater science to it. And I remember people uh, carbonating it with wheat, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not with wheat, but with yeast, yeast. right? Yeast and, yep. and then sugar. So tell me about that process. Um, well, I, and I get people all the time coming up to my booth saying, oh, well, my grandparents used to make root beer and they would put yeast in it and then they right. would put it in the cellar and then, you know, we would hear it exploding from time to time. <laughs> That's just a natural thing. I right. love that. Yeah. Isn't that great? But that's what happened to you there. Yeah, it's a little yes, explode right, right yes, here. Don't right. worry about it. The only way to get around <laughs> that was we needed a way to carbonate this and get it cold without watering it down. So we, that's what we use the dry ice for huh. um, as it carbonates it. And we don't uh, use wet ice. You know, to uh, so when you serve it, do you actually do you like post dry ice down in there, or no, that's just no, part of the I process? Have a, I have a big, huge barrel or uh, a couple of barrels. And he's, you were serving it so fast, so yeah. there's no possible way. And for safety things, we would never, of course, give anybody right, uh, right. It's something. But for us on television, television for uh, or for you, it, most especially, it's exactly yes. right. Yeah. But you said that it's a, a, a mainly an American drink, right? Yes. Why is it? Um, sassafras pretty much only grows in this country. And it's a back east, southern kind of a, it's a tree, and they get the root from it. And the Native Americans used to use it for uh, digestive purposes, I to help their that. digestive. Only here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I have served it to people from Europe and that kind of thing, and they, they like it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>